May all beings be happy. May all beings be healthy. May all beings be free from harm. May all beings love life. May all beings awaken. Welcome to another Cute Audio podcast. A brief memory. I pray that you and yours are safe and comfortable, free from economic hardship, and able to get out and do whatever it is you want within the limitations of the universal precept of do as little harm as possible. So um, this is a brief memory from John Steiner. Mm, John was at the first practice period in 1967. I remember him and Bill Lane doing trash, trash pickup in a pickup truck. Anyway, so uh, here's a brief memory from John Steiner. One morning I drove Suzuki Roshi to the Los Altos Zendo. The night before, Catfish Hunter had pitched a perfect game. Suzuki Roshi didn't seem to know much about baseball, but was struck that somebody could be called Catfish. (laughs) He fell asleep, and as I got toward Los Altos, I realized I didn't know what exit to take. He woke up a hundred yards before the right exit and told me to take it and directed me from there to the Zindo. It reminds me of a lecture he gave at Tassajara where he said that when he was a new student, he got the job of having to ring the wake-up bell, but he had no alarm. He tried to stay up but kept falling asleep and finally fell asleep for good. Then he awoke and saw it was just at the right time. He realized then that he could wake up when he wanted to without a clock. It was a double wake-up. He realized that there was more to him than he'd thought and that he could depend on himself. He always lost and forgot things. Once I answered the phone at the office on Bush Street, and it was Oksan saying that Suzuki Roshi had forgotten his false teeth, and I had to take them to him. They were in a container, and I didn't look inside. Once in the early days at Bush Street, I was walking in the Zendo during Zazen, for some reason that I don't remember, and I looked at Suzuki Roshi sitting Zazen, and his face looked like a death mask. Years later, I realized I was looking emptiness in the face. Suzuki Roshi's practice is now deeply in my soul. Uh, When he says he was walking in the Zendo, well... He could have been working in the kitchen or something and coming back late, but he could have been carrying the stick, you know. We used to use this kiosk or the stick to hit each other on the shoulder, you know. Um, you know, you'd warn somebody by laying it on their shoulder and they put their hands together and gosh, oh, and then lean over and you go, bam! And then they'd lean to the left and they go, bam! And it was all right, uh, but... Mm, uh, there's no stick in in any of Suzuki's lineage anymore that I know of. It's a, really a Japanese thing, really important to them there. <laughs> like, if a, there was a visiting priest from Japan, Suzuki, uh, you know, they'd come join us, and Suzuki would get up and go around and just hit everybody. Uh, and then, you'd know, <laughs> the visiting priest would know there was real Zen there. <laughs> Okay, this has been a brief memory. I'm D.C. Puba of Cuke Audio and Cuke Archives, preserving the legacy of Shindu Suzuki and those whose paths crossed his, and anything else that comes to mind. And coming to you from Sleepy Sanur with Doggy Bandita, Feline Cuchita, and dear lovely Katrinka. And we're wishing you and yours and all of us a grand awakening.